Welcome to Direct Talk, interviews with leaders, visionaries, and pioneers who are shaping Asia and the rest of the world. Our guest today is Kentaro Hayashi, a medical doctor and social entrepreneur. Hayashi has worked for Doctors Without Borders in countries including Nigeria, Sri Lanka, and Iraq. He's made regular visits to Myanmar since 2004, providing healthcare to ethnic minority communities in remote regions. And in recent years, he's been working in rural Myanmar to grow a social business focused on the cultivation of a spice called star anise. We asked Hayashi about both his medical work and his entrepreneurial endeavor. In 2016, Myanmar ended a long period of military rule. Urban areas of the country have since seen rapid economic growth. Development has come slower, however, to the mountainous regions and farming villages where ethnic minorities live. Good health care is also in short supply here. Kentaro Hayashi makes regular trips to these parts of Myanmar to give medical exams. The big cities like Yangon and Mandalay are rapidly getting developed world health care. But in the mountain regions where ethnic minorities live, the infrastructure is poor, including the soft infrastructure. Health care is severely insufficient in minority areas. That's just the reality. No health care professionals, no access to proper clinics. And if doctors did come to these regions, no one could pay them. Those are the three barriers these places are currently facing. The things we can do would include lancing a boil and draining the pus, or fixing, to a certain extent, a bone fracture that's healing in an unnatural position, while easing the pain with a local anesthetic. But removing an appendix Performing a C-section, we can't really do those things in a remote mountain village. For patients with those issues, you have to get them to the nearest hospital or a clinic that can do the procedure. If you're in a real conflict zone, the patient probably won't want to go to a hospital in a city. You wouldn't feel safe going to a hospital run by a different ethnic group a tribe that's not yours. We have to promise them, we'll make sure you're completely safe on the journey. We'll make sure you're safe in the hospital. And when you're better, our people will get you home safe. We convince them. There will be checkpoints on the journey, both government ones and guerrilla ones. At each checkpoint, we have to convey, we have a sick patient with us. Will you allow us to pass to save this person's life? That's how we get people to the hospital. Recently, Hayashi did a checkup on a nine-year-old boy. He discovered that this boy had Duchenne muscular dystrophy an incurable condition that affects one boy out of every 3,300 births. It's a genetic disorder that presents among males at a young age. The muscles atrophy. Usually it appears around age five, and then you gradually weaken. The individual muscle fibers waste away. At age eight or nine, it becomes difficult to stand up. By around 12, you can't walk at all. At around age 15, the muscle you use to breathe and the muscles you use to cough, they stop working. Your throat fills up with phlegm, and you can get pneumonia and die. The mother of the boy noticed something was wrong. She was at a loss, and right when she knew the boy really needed help, we arrived. This condition, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, there's no cure for it. The only treatments we have are gene therapy drugs that are still in the trial phase. So we determine whether or not these drugs might be effective. 
If they won't work, then we rely on physical therapy or palliative care. They have to accept death. But how can the family make it easier for their child? How can we take away the pain and suffering of the child himself? Make it a little easier, soften the blow. How can I provide that sort of treatment? That's what we're thinking about next. The mother said to me, please help us. I have to do something to honor that request. Meeting this child was my destiny. And so in response, I have to give it my best. I have to do something. That's my guiding principle. Help the weak. With that credo in mind, Hayashi has done volunteer medical work in Myanmar for many years now. Becoming a doctor, he believes, was his destiny. Hayashi is from a medical family. His father and grandfather were doctors too. After finishing medical school at a university in Okinawa, he started work at the university hospital. It was during this time that the United States was struck by the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. Large numbers of American troops based in Okinawa were dispatched to Afghanistan and then Iraq. These events spurred Hayashi to action. He joined Doctors Without Borders and went to provide medical care in countries including Iraq, Sri Lanka, and Myanmar. I had friends in the U.S. Army, and these people in the American military were heading off to the battlefield. No matter what the pretext was, they were going to kill. They were going to slaughter these people. These people I knew were going off to exterminate. Maybe I, as a doctor, could do something in response. I could go to these places and do something. My actions could be a retort to theirs. And the method I chose was to go to these battlefields, these disaster zones. If I could heal people who had been hurt by war, I could give them hope. I could take away their hate. Through medicine, Maybe I could help to create peace. Maybe I could help to stop the conflict. That was my thinking. Hayashi was first dispatched to Myanmar in 2004 during a break in the ongoing civil conflict there. His job was to provide medical care in remote regions that were home to impoverished ethnic minority groups. <laughs> However, three months after he arrived, conflict broke out anew. The entire area that Hayashi had been assigned to was engulfed in war. I had been traveling in the jungle for two weeks, and when I got back, everyone gave me a hero's welcome. You made it back, amazing! I had seen bodies floating in the rivers, villages burning. I asked what had happened, and they said, there's been a coup, the ceasefire's off. Given the circumstances, I had no choice but to evacuate. And so Hayashi was evacuated from Myanmar. But he had promised a young girl with tongue cancer that he would give her the operation she desperately needed. She was maybe seven at the time. Her tongue was so big she couldn't speak, could barely eat. Flies would swarm around her tongue, meaning it could get infected at any minute. She couldn't lead a normal life. And so her mother brought her to me. And then I had to leave this conflict zone, this region. There was nothing I could do. After I got back to Japan, I tried to see if there was something I could do. 
Was there someone in Myanmar who could do the surgery properly? And who would look after her through the chemotherapy? I needed to find a local doctor that I could trust, that would take charge of the surgery for me, get her to a good clinic. I was searching for a solution. Then I learned about a group in Japan that worked with a professor of dentistry and dental surgery in Myanmar. His name was Professor Kokomon. The professor agreed to work with us, and he was able to successfully perform the operation on this child with tongue cancer. This was my mission, truly. I take it very seriously. When I saw her after the third or fourth surgery, I thought, she looks totally normal. She looks fantastic. And she was actually quite a chatterbox. I felt so relieved. I think of my work as a doctor as kind of a link, trying to pass the situation on to the next doctor who comes along in a better condition. It's not about how I fix someone or how I did this procedure on someone. Hayashi no longer works with doctors without borders, but he continues to volunteer as a doctor in Myanmar. He does something else there too. In 2013, he started cultivating the trees that produce the spice star anise. In 2018, they bore fruit for the first time. Hayashi calls this social business the Star Anise Peace Project. His hope is that offering people in Myanmar solid jobs will help to create peace. Star Anise is a spice native to southern China. It grows in warm regions of relatively high elevations, 500 to 1,000 meters. It's used in Chinese cooking, pork stews, for example. A chemical compound in star anise is also used to make Tamiflu, the antiviral drug that prevents influenza. In 2023, the patent on Tamiflu expires, so you can make the same drug and sell it as a generic. Tamiflu will always be in demand. Government stockpile it in case a pandemic ever breaks out. The original idea was to cultivate this star anise used to make Tamiflu in the mountainous areas where impoverished ethnic groups live. It could be a good source of income for them. Now I've given this idea an official name, the Star Anise Peace Project. When the soldiers put down their guns, they don't have to pick them up again. They don't have to become mercenaries to make money. They have another source of income. We also hope that the people currently growing narcotics will replace those crops with ours. Economic independence, financial independence, no poverty. I think this is undoubtedly a big part of how to create peace, and that is why I will keep at this business. The middle path. Think about Western medicine, about the word medicine specifically. The meta in medicine is the same root as moderate. It's the middle path. Medicine, and this includes clinical medicine, is about figuring out how to restore a balance that's been thrown off. Get it back to the middle. The same applies to peace, to societal problems. All of these things are about figuring out what to do when things are out of balance. How do we set things straight? How do we get to a middle path? That's the question that's always on my mind. And that's how I intend to keep doing my life's work. Focus on that middle path.